everyone, welcome to your next QB64 tutorial. And in this tutorial, we'll be learning about two-dimensional arrays, or in other words, a matrix. Now, in the last tutorial, we learned about regular arrays, how they're basically a list of data. Just a little refresher. Dim array as integer. You don't have to call it array. I'm just going to call it array just for this example. And actually, dim array and in parentheses you put how many elements you want in the array or in other words how many items you want in the list so dim array as integer and it can be a c numbers it can be strings it can be anything you want so dim array as integer and you can set the individual elements of the array to values array 1 equals 5 array 2 equals 6 and so on and so forth so that's a regular one-dimensional array. But today we'll be learning about two-dimensional arrays. And think of it like this. Here, hold on one moment. I'm going to get paint in the view so I can illustrate this for you. So think of a two-dimensional array as an array with other arrays as their elements. I know that can be kind of hard to grasp. But if you look at this nice little grid, I'm going to try and draw it for you. Here, I'm not the best artist, so I'll try to make it not terrible. And we're going to add one more column. Okay, this illustrates a two-dimensional array. Now, we would write this as dim and our array name. So we'll just call this array. And when, what we put in parentheses, we'll put two numbers. And so notice that we have two rows. Actually, no, three columns, I should say. Notice that we have three columns, so we're going to put three as our first parameter. And see that we have two rows, so we'll put two as our next parameter. Now, you'll notice that uh, each element for uh, the three parameter, we ha you see we'll have three columns and the two represents another array that is being put in the first parameter so think of it this way we have three columns we have our first column our second column and our third column each column or element in our array has another array in it which has two elements So I hope that this il illustration helps you in any capacity. Here, I'll move this back out of the way. And so now we're going to be begin creating our ar array. So dim, and we're just going to call this uh, two. Uh, actually, that's a little too long. Two-dimensional array. We'll just call this array as. Oops, almost forgot to put my parameters. We're just going to do a three by two array as integer. So one. When we initialize our elements, meaning we give values to each individual element, we will do array, and we want to do the first element, so 1, 1 equals, we'll just say, 5. Next, we'll do array 1, 2 equals, we'll just do 8. And I'm just going to go back to paint right here, and I'm going to go ahead and erase this because we made a new array. And so uh, here, let me just check back. We have a uh, let me look one three by two array. So this is going to have three columns and two rows. So we have three columns, one, two. So we have one, two, three, and two rows per column. So that's basically saying, here, I'll switch back right here. You'll notice that we have, excuse me for a moment, 1, 1 equals 5. So we have our column 1, row 1, and that's going to equal 5. Just like we have 2, 3, 2, we'll look right here, we have 1, 2 equals 8, so we'll look at column 1, row 2, and so that will be equal to 8. 
So let's further initialize our two-dimensional array. So uh, we'll do array, and since we since we already uh, have Excuse me from excuse me real quick. I'm sorry I misled you real quick. I'm not that I'm looking at my paint. Uh this is incorrect. Right here I'm just going to go ahead and erase this. My apologies. When in fact it would be 1 2 which equals 8. Keep in mind that we are looking at this co specific column right here, 1. And these two rows are being changed, not the column. My apologies, but this is correct. Not not this value right here. The reason being would be that if we were talking about this column, this first number would have to equal two, but it equals one, so we're working with the first column. So anyway, let's continue to initialize this. So now that we have both rows for the one column, we'll start we'll have to start initializing the second column. So array 2, 1 equals, we'll just put 9, and array 2, 2 equals, we'll just put 8, and then now we have to initialize the third column. Array, and we'll have, sorry about that, 3, 1, which equals 88, array 3, 2 will equal 99. So as you can see right here, we have three groups. So that's basically saying three columns, and you see right here, three right here, and two rows per column. So we have 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. And so we have all of our uh, array elements initialized. And one thing that you might notice, if you multiply both parameters, 3 times 2 equals 6, you'll notice that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 elements in the array. So that lets you know that you initialized it correctly. And so we can go ahead and use our elements in the array, print array, and we're just going to say we're going to print 2, 2, and notice that it should print 8. So if we go ahead and run our program, we get the value of 8. Pretty handy, huh? And so if we print out, let's say, 3, 1, as you can see, 3, 1 equals 88. So if we go ahead and run the program, we will get 88. So, one way we can print all of the elements in the array is by, of course, using a for loop. However, since we have a two-dimensional array, um, we will need two counters for our for loop. So, 4x equals 1, 2, how many uh, parameters and how many elements in the first parameter, which would be 3. So, 3 and 4y equals, we're just going to nest some for loops, 4y equals 1 to 2, and the reason why I put 2 is because we have two rows for, so for each, for uh, each column that we have, for each three elements, we have two rows. And so in this case, we're going to go ahead and print array x, y. And then we're just going to go ahead and end this x, next y, next x. Okay, so this is how it's going to work. x is going to equal 1, y is going to equal 1, print out 1, 1. y will then equal 2, print out 1, 2. Goes, goes, next, goes to the next x, x equals 2, y equals back to 1, so uh, 2, 1, and then 2, 2, and then so on and so forth. So if we go ahead and run our program, you will see that each of the elements are being printed out on the screen. And you'll notice 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's all six elements are being printed. 
And so that's a good way to check if everything's working correctly, because you'll notice that there should be always, whenever you create two-dimensional arrays, you take your first parameter, your second parameter, multiply them together, that gets the total amount of elements in your array. And if there's anything other than that, then you did something wrong. So I hope this helped you in, in any capacity. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to message me, and I will answer back to you as quickly as possible, because I know this was hard for me to understand when I first tried to learn arrays. But trust me, you'll get it. Just watch this tutorial a couple of times, maybe you've watched some more tutorials, and you'll get it. It's a pretty simple concept. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it helped you in any capacity. My name is Zachary, and I fit you very well.